films are handmade, shot on celluloid film, processed by hand in my dark room at home. Uh, the recordings are digital, sound recordings are digital and edited, not usually edited very much. I like to just record when I'm shooting the film and then use that one way or another in, in, the, in the film. So we got uh, five films, I think. They're all under five minutes. And I think there's a, there's a theme, there, there's, there's a look, and maybe there's a sound to it also. But uh, I like to go out nearby from where I live and uh, collect motion pictures and process them and sometimes process them again by making a print or messing in the darkroom. And then if it, if it brings a theme or an idea, then, then I'll make a, a movie and, and uh, enter it in some festivals or try to do screenings with it. Uh, like my friend Elspeth there says, uh, sometimes it doesn't matter much what I get, as long as I get something. You don't want the blank film. If there's something there to look at, then there's something to work with. Merci. Thank you, Sandy. Okay, so the first film we're going to see is called The Line in the Sand. It's a double eight millimeter uh, hand processed black and white film with digital audio.
So that was a line in the sand. So uh, I don't know if everyone's familiar with dub, uh, double eight millimeter film uh, and how I assume, Sandy, one side is going forwards and one side is going reverse. Yeah. Is that right? It's, um, uh, runs through the camera twice. And you shoot half going one way and half going the other way. So time is, is always opposite on either side. And what produced the sound in the film? I went and used a, a little digital recorder to get the, the boat, that, that gurgling boat sound. Mm -hmm. um, I took some of the film that I processed with that line in the middle and I put it on a digital scanner okay. and then took those photographs and put it through a sound generator, sound synthesizer. So it kind of read that line like the, like the groove of a record, making a random sound. And uh, I got a map of the Lake of Bays where I shot and, and it's, a, it's like a topographic map, but in reverse. So it's a depth map. Mm -hmm. So there are contour lines. And I scanned that and took that picture and made it be read by the digital the sound sampler very simple software like old really old software um, so all the sound comes from the places one way or another comes from the places where I shot the film which was at various public public water access points around Lake of Bays uh, did anyone else have any questions for Sandy about a line in the sand I'm interested in how you sometimes ended up with four frames instead of um, the two parallel ones. This film is originally meant to be slit down the middle mm -hmm. and spliced end to end so that you would only see one frame at a time. Right. So the film starts out 16 millimeters wide and in that traditional slitting ends up eight millimeters wide. Right. So in the case of this film, I, I did not slit the film and I projected it through a 16 millimeter opening. Right. And so that's why we see four frames at a time. Okay. And uh, if you turn the camera upside down when you're shooting the B side, you, you'll get both pictures right side up but they go back, they, one, they go opposite in time. Right, right. Uh, so at one point I noticed that, that we did see a, one of the boats was upside down. So I forget sometimes, is this the A side or the B side? So am I, turning, am I turning the projector upside down or not? <laughs> so that's why it's a collection and you look at it after developing the darkroom to see what it might be. So if it's interesting, 
if I find it interesting with the four frames, I stay with that. And if right. not, you can, you can slit it down the middle and do something with the single frames. Great. I thought it was wonderful. I forget who introduced me to that idea. John Porter might, might know. It, it might have been like Carl the, at Liaison of Independent Filmmakers in Toronto. Somebody said, you, you, can, you, you don't have to slit it. You can put it in a 16 millimeter projector. Whoa, that's <laughs> one of the best things I ever learned. And what about the sepia tones? You seem to have sepia tones sometimes. I was just saying uh, when I had the microphone turned off that that worked out well. I think what I did was after processing, I took that film back to the beach and tossed it around in the sand. Oh, wonderful. So That's great. I think it, it really took on the quality of the sand in some parts there. And then sometimes one of the sides, like you said, sometimes you see four frames and sometimes you don't. So I like it when the sides sort of blend and there are no frame lines. So one side is like just a continuous streak. And yeah. some of that sand part, I think, was quite streaky. So I, it, it, I think that's what I did, if I remember correctly. Uh, I, I don't worry about hurting the film. It's tough stuff. So you, you, can, <laughs> you, can, you can kick it around in the beach. <laughs> I just wanted to second that. I really like the feel of it. And uh, it seems like you had a lot of fun uh, making it, which kind of comes through. But the idea of the topographical map um being used to make sound i think that's that's really cool uh i had it I, I was picturing that it was going to be port sydney because i think you're around that area but it's uh lake of bays is it okay that, that but one yeah, was uh port uh, that one was lake of bays lake of bays well I mean, you really got this uh nice summer at the beach kind of feeling even though it's so distorted usually film like distorted film become it, it seems kind of disturbing but for some reason it not not this time you know you gotta it's like you know f nothing captures the sunlight like film a lot of people still say that right so um even though it's so distorted it, it comes through it's very cool thanks yeah i, I think it's the my favorite part is just to make the sun hit the film uh, it doesn't have to look like anything in particular I, I also like the idea that the film, which is five minutes long, was made uh, of Lake of Bays, which is one of the biggest lakes in this area. And so it's such a microcosm. And you, your title, Line in the Sand, is ambiguous, but it, I, think it's, I think it's wonderful. It actually comes from a time when, when, when Trump was just getting rolling and I... I saw the world becoming divided, and I, I like the mm. line down the middle of the, yeah. the that film. It's unique that way, and uh, that that term "line in the sand" it's it sort of it's confrontational, I guess. I, I don't mean the film to be confrontational, but sometimes mm -hmm. a, a title or a sense it just um, <laughs> it, it magically informs what the camera ends up seeing somehow. I don't know. Cool, John. Did you want to add something, uh, Sandy? I, I, as I type, I, I thought that was fantastic. My uh, mobile screen never looked so good. Um, where was your? Uh, where was the frame line? Did you? Is that just come with your camera, or did you file out the gate? Um, the frame line kind of moves because the. The registration in those old Bolex uh, eight millimeter cameras, it's, it's not precise. And then with the processing, sometimes I wipe out the frame line. I, 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 my, the bleach is my favorite part. And it, it can just to remove the frame line altogether. But the, uh, the, full, the full gate is a 16 millimeter gate. So we're seeing four eight millimeter frames at once and uh it's it just sometimes that works out it's just luck i guess cool uh well i think we'll move on to the next film um uh which is uh thanksgiving weekend to the cottage and uh those of us live that live in this region uh know when you look over the highway you see 
the mass is coming on a Friday night. And uh, Sandy's uh, piece uh, captures this really beautifully. And uh, this, this one is a silent film. Uh, so there uh, won't be any sound in this film. And, uh, but the sound to me uh, happens in your mind uh, is a very evocative of what's uh, going on. Uh, well, I think one thing though that strike, strikes me about, and we did see that in in our abbreviated showing of it, is the the red streaks of the lights. Uh, how was that created? Uh, that this film was made on Super 8, and I used a Nitso camera and just clicked the shutter um, so, uh, so it it stayed open um, with those ones as as John Porter taught me you can leave the shutter open so it can make a longer exposure than a normal than another type of motion picture camera which are usually usually limited to uh, a thirtieth of a second or so so those exposures are half a second I think enough that the, the light moves just on one frame. It's pretty fun. And, and I just stood, stood on the overpass. Uh, 
And when we are filming it, what kind of feedback are you getting in terms of what you see? Uh, and that's informing your decisions in, in the moment. Um, you have to practice a bit with uh, the tool, I guess, to know what, what it can do and, and how the, the buttons work. Um, and then you hope that the batteries last. Uh, this particular camera I've had out for repair a couple of times, it just it stops working. They're, they're made in the 70s and they're complex as heck. If you open them up, I can't troubleshoot them. So the, feed, the feedback that you get is that you, you hope you're getting something because you're out there for a few hours. And, and then when you go home and process it, you hope that you, you, you process it okay. And then um, that it's interesting because th this is all, uh, there's no editing. Like that's just what I shot. And that's mostly how I work it. A lot of the stuff is, is try, you have an idea and you try to get it when you go out with your camera. But those Nitzo cameras are, are good for that. I think, I think they're the only ones that can do that. Is that right, John Porter? Um, keep the shutter completely open for up to, what, two minutes? Long time. Anyway, you can get a, streaks of light, two minutes, yeah. So those are fun tools. Because the streaks are neat, and the color, the color, it works as a color. You know, the white lights coming up on the Friday night, and the red lights heading home on Monday night. Long weekend, <laughs> <laughs> which I used to do before I lived here. Uh, Sandy. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, those long exposures mean you have to shoot a lot longer. You're out there for a long time. Yeah. It's a strange phenomenon. Taking the pictures because uh, it it's not it's not real time. Um, I'm not explaining that very well. Um, yeah, a long time. So, so to get 10 cars going by, it might take a, a few minutes, but then it just shows on the, on the picture for, a few, for a couple of seconds. So it's, it's playing with time. And, uh, uh, beautiful colors. What was the film stock? Oh, that, um, let me think now. I guess that that wasn't old stock, so that must have been the um, Whitner Whitner Chrome. So it's a, it's processed to look like that. There's no negative. When you process it, it comes out looking like our eyes see it. You don't have to make a print. I think that was the Whit Whitner Chrome. Yeah. Now you can get ectochrome again. It's not cheap. It used to be cheap. I have stickers on the old Kodachrome boxes, you know, $5.50 for the film and the processing. Now it's um, $60, I think. Wow. With, with not including processing. But it looked like, uh, it looked like Kodachrome. No, I didn't have any of Not that. Ectochrome. I didn't have any of that. No, for, but you used Whitner Chrome. I think and it so. looked more like Kodachrome than it looked like Ectochrome. It it really liked the red tail lights, eh? The leaves. I like the leaves. Oh the leaves, yeah. Yeah. And then we go to winter at the end. So if I can say something, uh, I did this trip when growing up uh, as well, Toronto to Muskoka every weekend. And uh, so it, there's a bit of nostalgia there. And it's, it's interesting because of course the medium, you know, uh, super eight, I mean, it, it brings you, it brings you back. I mean, uh, a lot of productions use film 
when they're going to like a memory sequence or something like that. And so I, I have to ask, um, when did you shoot this, Sandy? I think that one is from 2017 or 2018. Okay, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's interesting. I mean, I, I, th I thought it was modern, but um, it could have been in the 90s. Um, and uh, something about the film stock almost like brought out the oranges. So you you almost think that they, the headlights are still those old kind of orange bulbs. I don't know if I was the only one getting that, but it, the, you know, the, the orange glow was, was neat for me and uh, definitely um, like the, like the sepia tones of, of the last one too. Um, so, you know, uh, it's got this kind of childhood feeling for me, you know, just getting in the car with mom and dad when I was little to, to go up north. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, pretty oh, neat. Th thanks. There was some kind of lens uh, thing going on too. You see it more of with the white lights in the, in the first half, uh, making a um, flary, like the lights kind of doubled. Yeah. Uh, I, it was just something that, that happened. You, you have no idea that that was going to happen. It just turned, it was luck. It, it just turned out that way. Yeah, I wanted to ask if that was the the lens. Was that a, a layer of glass uh, behind the lens uh, that it was catching, or it could have been anything? I usually just have a like a protective, like a UV filter or something on the front. So maybe that made some reflections in. It was a fluke. So, Sandy, the uh, lights that were coming up from the bottom left of the screen, they were separate from the headlights. Was that a reflection off a mirror over there, or was it? Did you organize that, or that just showed up in the film? No, uh, unorganized chaos, which <laughs> was appreciated. Something to do with the light and the, the in the lens. I guess the lens that lens is being a zoom lens. It has many glass elements in it, and and somehow the the the, the direct light in it bounced around somehow. I, I, it was just a, a thrill to to see that afterwards like finding a ghost in a negative you know that you didn't see at the time cool i think we move on to the next uh, film uh it's gonna be called the last skate so as sandy alluded to the previous one ending at winter time and this one of course uh, picks up uh the winter experience in Yukoka, skating on lakes and uh, which is very Evident in the soundtrack, and uh, and of course is treated in a in a uh, in a very different way visually. Uh, it's uh, using uh, uh, eight millimeter Bolex cameras, double exposure, and uh, sometimes using a pinhole for lens, and then hand processing with various recipes and physicalities.
So you, you referred to, uh, Sandy, that you hand process the film with different techniques. What were what was some of the techniques you used to process the, the film that we saw? Uh, you can develop the film uh, to, to get an image. So that's the first step, the developer. And then after that, you can go a bit nuts. You could use bleach, different kinds of bleach. You could use uh, ideas like with the sand one. I don't remember. I, I, I might have taken this one to the beach again and, and dunked it in the ice water. It had a very, uh, really organic look and sound to it, uh, unlike the first two films. Um, it looked like we were inside a body, someone's body. And uh, to, earlier today, I was uh, getting my heart tested. It was some, something called an echo test. And I could hear my heart. It wasn't like a boom, 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 boom. It was like a <laughs> And this, this uh, reminded me of that. It was very much like that. Yeah, it has that interior quality to it, the sound. I like the relentless nature of the sound. Um, so maybe we'll move on to the next uh, film. So the next film, uh, so the, the, actually the next two films that sort of close off the show are both kind of related. They're both about moving. Um, so moving as in moving houses or moving homes. So recently Sandy moved to Port Sydney and I think this first piece uh, is before that move happened, and uh, it was made in 2019, which I guess was close to the time you moved. But um, but it it contemplates uh, whether to move or not. I think it's the, and I think it's very evident in the soundtrack, and uh, will um, which part of the soundtrack comes from uh, a cassette that he uh, found that had. Uh, some uh, audio from an ideas show and then i think he also recorded dubbed over his voice in that his voice has a very cassette like quality uh to it uh, and uh is there anything visually that we should be aware it's of it's a it's a double eight double eight okay the 16 millimeter frame so four frames at a time so same as the first film that we saw yes okay okay Men were men, and differences were... Giving the keynote address in October 1986. One, two, one, two. I was thinking of moving. I was thinking of moving. I've been thinking about moving. I've been thinking about moving. And about it. About moving. Uh, I've been thinking about moving, thinking about moving. The existing patriarch. What would it be like to move? You have to pack up and get rid of shit. It might be hard. It might be good. Just thinking about it. And uh, still thinking about moving. I haven't moved yet. How they might. You gotta move sometime. You can't, you can't just stay in place. It is not only the communities of religious women that are changing. One, two. Yeah, still thinking about moving. Move out. Move up. Move down. Move it. Move it. 
Very exciting. And I must say that when I started, I, never, I didn't realize that one of the major advantages would be the... Uh, these Could stay. Can you please? Stay put. Stay there. Please, would you help us out? Could also uh, move. Jumped into the chariot and hid under her robe. So, uh, the one who moved. That's moving part one. Uh, uh, John Porter, you said it's it's fun to see the double eight on on the mobile. I, I, I agree. It is pretty. It's pretty neat to see that. Uh, well, it's very bright too. A lot brighter than really any eight millimeter projector. <laughs> right, they are dull. But uh, how, did you use different, did you use different cameras in this film? I think I used the Bolex. I have a few different ones. Uh, the B8 is my, my favorite. Uh, you can put different lenses on it, screw them on. Nice glass lenses that open up wide, 1.8. Uh, so no, I think I just used that camera pretty much. Maybe that, maybe the uh, bigger one, the bigger, bigger Bolex. But um, you know, you, the, I'm watching the frame lines between the eight millimeter and the separation uh, down the middle. And it looked like like three different cameras. You know, the yeah. gate was different. In, yeah, there was three different gates. Yeah, there would have been would have been three or more different cameras. Yeah, it it sits in there differently, and then when you flip it on, sometimes the line um, gets. Sometimes the frames come together, so there is no line. And and other times the, the line dances, <laughs> which is kind of fun. I love that. The uh, yeah, the, the, the separation down the middle was fluctuating. I've never seen yeah. that before. It was it's great. Yeah, it's, it was another pulsing. It was like a pul yeah. pulsing. Is it? Yeah, I like it too. It's another fluke that just that just happened, and you wouldn't see that if you if you slid it. Yeah. The thing the thing you've got to make a decision if you're going to make it a double eight film because once you slid it, you can't get it back. There's no splicing tape for going down the middle. <laughs> What's wrong with scotch tape? Uh, talk to Gary, well, talk to Gad and Aterosian. <laughs> yeah. Between the two of you speaking there just now, you, you'd know somebody or you, you'd talk, try it yourself. Talk to Gad and Aterosian about splitting a film down the middle and then splicing it back together. <laughs> okay. One, one nice thing, I, I have an optical printer at home now, eight, eight mil, double eight millimeters and a regular eight millimeter. So you can feed something like that through it by hand, like just hold it together and, and photograph those frames as you, as you push it through. It doesn't have to go through the sprockets in real time. And, and then you, you photograph those frames. See, that's an idea. That's why we get together.
Sandy, I was just wondering if that last shot, uh, was it an ice hut and were you still on your yard for that one? Oh, right. Uh, so that was on Lake of Bays at the public beach. And that is actually a 16 millimeter frame frames. And it is, it is, it's a fish ice hut, fish hut. They're quite fascinating things to shoot. These you'll, you'll see one in the next film too. Uh, these little, they're like little models of houses sitting out there on, on the ice and pe people decorate them differently and they're different shapes and, and sizes. And uh, I, this last year I saw tents for the first time. They're not nearly as interesting as the solid structures, but yeah, that was a 16 millimeter frame. And I had to, I had to get it on to eight millimeter for a festival that doesn't accept 16 millimeter. <laughs> so I did have to optically print it to to get it normally you take the eight millimeter film and blow it up to 16 millimeter because it looks it just looks bigger and brighter like john said the the eight millimeter projectors are, are dull and and the picture is very small so 16 millimeter is four times as big and it, the projectors are brighter and the picture is bigger on the wall so it was an odd thing to be shrinking it back down <laughs> so that was a different type of film with a bigger, bigger frame, bigger picture. Yeah, that's doing couple? things in, in a different way for sure. Um, I've got a, I like I've got a collection of them. Okay. <laughs> in a bucket, a whole bunch to put together. <laughs> a bucket? <laughs> a bucket full of uh, ice, uh, fish hats, yeah. <laughs> Somebody once gave me a six quart, a wooden six quart basket full of glass negatives to work with. That was. Very strange, but provided me two years of fun. Nice. Yeah, I wanted to say, as in the last uh, film that we watched, where you know you had some Wi-Fi problems and it cut out, but um, uh, it, we went all the way through, watched it all the way through, and I just wanted to say that eight millimeter shooting on the ice um, and shooting nature, just raw scenes of nature, it makes you. It makes the the viewer feel like it's much further away than just you know two hours from Toronto. It's really like some remote place that we're we're likely never to reach. So I, I like that dimension for sure. Yeah, I think it's fun to to shoot uh, stuff and then see it processed, and it turns out to be that's a good description far away in your mind and your eye from actually standing there on, on the beach and, and looking out. And I think that's just fun because it's pretty easy to take it like a digital picture of the beach and, and those pictures would all look the same. These are going to surprise. Sandy, I have a challenge for you. Uh, I think you should make your next film uh, when you're wearing a pair of skates. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was, I was wearing, I, I was wearing skates during the last skate. Ah. Um, and I also put the camera on the ice and pushed it around with a stick. Oh, great. <laughs> yeah. We'll see if this is a skating season or not that the, the yeah. lakes, uh, the lakes, giveth and the licks taketh away skating opportunities. All right, so we'll uh, maybe watch a moving part two. Um, so in Sandy, this is a brand new film. This is the first time it's been shared publicly as far as I, I know, unless someone caught the link on your YouTube page before uh, we did, but uh, we'll consider it the premiere. Um, it's called moving part two. So, and uh, in brackets, uh, onerous, uh, but with a W thrown in there as a, I guess, a play on words. And uh, so what did you mean by onerous? Having obliged myself to carry around uh, stuff from my mother, from my father, and from myself, and then not knowing what to do with it uh owning it not really wanting it but not wanting to throw it away 
Mm -hmm. So I found that I found, I continue to find that onerous. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, there's a packing box that features in this piece. It kind of becomes your main subject of this film as opposed to the house. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, are something I use to make the pinhole cameras with. And um, we have them around the house. Uh, my wife packs paintings in them. So they are an object that, that we have around both in the flat and in the and all the fo all the forms of the cardboard box are known here. Right. Yeah, so then we uh, moved. I was thinking about moving boxes, thinking about them. Moving boxes piled high with things I kept, I know not why. What do you get when you look inside? I look at them and I want to hide. Ah, but tossing things in the dump. And maybe that hurts worse. One day it'll get tossed. It's inevitable. If I do it, next people won't have to be burdened with this stuff. Are there other people out there who will take it and drag it along? We're thinking about moving boxes. 
moving boxes, lying flat, means lift of weight and trim of fat. like the box was on fire um that was me who wrote that and uh i was wondering if that was intentional or if there was a way of coloring the film to make it look like fire because it was really effective especially with the play on words and this this idea of i, I feel that possessions were kind of making you feel chained down uh it's just hard to deal with it one way or another you know really i don't like to uh deal with the boxes but but once once the stuff's gone then most of the time you don't worry about it but it, it's hard to take it to the dump but there's no purpose really for, for the stuff if you like a, a, a guard at an empty prison or something uh, but the film turns brown in, in the bleach and it's one thing that's good about showing the original because if you made a print of that film either on black and white or color it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be the same it's a physical brown that's on that particular stock i think maybe there's a way that you could get a, 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 a digital scan of it in color so you preserve the brown and then you film the digital video one frame at a time but i haven't i haven't gone that that route it's great if you can show the original that the sound in this is from uh, mostly from the split reel that 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 holds the film on the rewind crank and and the film is sliding between the sides the flanges of the reel and I put a microphone very close to it and it just it just came up I, you know I didn't know what I was going to do for sound I knew I was going to say some words but that sound just came up while I was working and it's part of the work it's part of making the film is this sound and I, and I liked the sound does the sound for you come after you've worked on the film yes in this way mm -hmm. yes yeah, it, it, I would say that it does come after. Yes. And again, that wasn't edited. That's just how it sounded when you put your microphone or your ear right beside that flange. There's the ticking of a, of a crank and there's the film falling between the, the flanges and they're vibrating. It sounds like a bell sometimes. So it's mm -hmm. like ticking, ticking clock and a, and a, be a bell church bell kind of thing in a sense Time. the sound of film projection and recording uh really reinforce the mechanical aspect of the medium um that you know that it seems to um it convey it conveys that so it's interesting to use that as uh in this day and age uh, of going back to this medium in a where where this, with the, with all the digital options that are around. What I what I miss in the COVID is uh, going to a festival where you're in the room with the projectors, mm -hmm. and and so they are a character in in the room, and, and at the festival. Uh, yeah, they make a sound, uh, they make a light. Sometimes they they break down the show. The show stops, and everybody's thinking about the projector. Uh, John Porter, he's done a brilliant piece at the Eight Fest where he takes the projector and points the 
the film at, di at different parts of the room relative to what's in the frames of the film. You just can't get that in an online thing. So I, I do miss being in the room with projection. Uh, Sandy X, yeah, actually I was going to mention the eight fest uh, myself when you were talking about having the projector in the room. You know, they're planning on, they're still working on having their next festival, which is the end of January. And uh, we still don't know whether or not they'll have to do it online, which would be a real change for them. But I recommended to them that they show the projector and have the projector sound, maybe, you know, insert in the online screening the real changes and so you can watch the projector. <laughs> I, I like that idea. Yeah. I, it makes your, it kind uh, of a performance too. Uh, I also noticed on your t-shirt you have a reference to another uh, film festival that's going on at the same time. It is. It's it's on it's online uh, as we speak. I had a film showing there last night, and it's on tonight and the next night. It's in uh, Pennsylvania, and like the Eight Fest, and like the Artifact Film Festival in Calgary, although they don't have the projector in the room uh, at Movie Eight you're in the room with with the projector and and the real changes and the you know the lights go out and the starts up and you're all sort of you know hoping the film splices don't break or the sprocket holes don't you know it's it's a what do you call that a risky sometimes it's risky so they so it's online and you, but they've They've done it this way that you get a sense of that. That's oh no, or no. They, they or is it in person well, only? Uh, <clears throat> they just show digital films one after the other, as if you had queued up uh, these YouTubes one after the other. Oh, okay. so I sent I I I I projected my film onto the wall and shot it with a video camera. Okay, and 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 sent that to them. Right. Okay. So uh, so they're not uh, recreating the projection experience uh, not as john suggested yeah. no okay okay that's i, I like that idea though mm -hmm. uh, i think it's something to be enjoyed while it's available you know yeah. this this eight mil this double eight millimeter film you have to s seek it out it's not easy to find and uh it won't I, I don't think it'll be around forever so it's good to use it while it's available i think is there things lost uh, in the visual quality when it's captured on camera and then made digital? Um, like my experience, I, when I, 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 I thank you for the prompt to get me making this film to have it ready for today. And I, I finished it this afternoon. Um, but sitting down at the computer, once I got some footage processed and actually I had the footage from before, uh, I just took, I, I didn't want to make a movie there. I wanted to be in the dark room to make the movie. Uh, it's a hand to work with the hands. That's where the movies. That's where the movie is made. It's it's magic in the in the buckets of, of chemistry and, and hands and and time sitting at the computer. It didn't cut it for me. <laughs> um, and, and and there's no way I'm going to you know apply digital effects. To, to try and get some kind of weird look. I just, that doesn't appeal to me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think it's in, in, for my want of, of making stuff, it, it has to be the physical. Film is uh, tactile, malleable, it's, and therefore sculptural. Sculptural is a good word for it, yeah. When you, if you turn it sideways a little bit, it, you know, it does have bumps and cracks and uh, uh, the colors change and uh, holding up the, the pictures, you know, to see what they are. Can't, you can't do that with the digital. 
You don't need Wi-Fi and you don't need power, actually. You can have power out, still make a film. These cameras I work with, they, they're spring wound. Well, the Nitso Super 8 is battery operated, but most of them, you wind, wind them up. Hmm. And they're, they're nice machines. They, they've been working since some of these, you know, from the, since the 1950s. Yeah, hey, uh, just to say thank you for Sandy for sharing. That was a... Hey, congratulations. That's a very yeah. interesting group of films. Thank you to Nisa for, for putting this on. Oh, yes. Thanks to Nisa. You're welcome. Terry, you want to add anything? Uh, oh, oh, oops. What have I done? Just many thanks. Oh, thanks, Terry. Oh. Sorry, John, you got cut off there. Thanks for interest. Thanks loads. Sandy. Oh. Yes. Sandy, how many films, how many films do you have? Could you do a whole program? I'd love to see that. Um, I'd have to think like, no, I just started back into it in the last few years. So, um, I don't know about a whole, a whole program. I, I do, uh, think it's fun to go into a room with a few different types of projectors. Uh, I have done a, an exhibition where I showed a 16 millimeter, eight millimeter, double eight millimeter, super eight and 35 millimeter slides with all the projectors lined up. So if I gathered all of that stuff, I might have, have a program, but uh, I'll, ha I'll have to, I've got a bunch of stuff that I haven't put together. I, it's the thing that I maybe love the best is, is just to go out shooting and then process it and, and look at it. That's maybe the most, fun and exciting it's it's more work afterwards to to put it together and and with the eight millimeter once you slit it it's very very tiny and the splicer is it's, it's fussy so shooting and processing it, it is is the most fun so i have i have a bunch of, i have a collection of footage that i i should i, I will eventually put together so I'll keep working towards having a program. Yeah, I look forward to seeing more. Well, with the discussion, I, I appreciate your uh, uh, in, in influence. I think with the discussion and everyone's participation, we created a program out of out of these five films. So, you know, it was a merci beaucoup. <laughs> Um, and then Sandy will also be working with us again in, in the spring uh, for an in-person event uh, that uh, he's creating an installation that's a photographic, well, mostly photographic, but also with sound. And uh, it's a uh, piece that we developed with the students at the South River Public School. Uh, we just managed to do some workshops with them prior to the shutdown in March, and, um, and we hope to... Uh, revisit that material again in the new year and uh, it'll be on exhibit at NASA in April, uh, April and May. Uh, and it'll also have an interactive component uh, as well. That when you touch the photographs, it, it'll uh, trigger uh, audio file, audio recordings made by the students. And uh, so, yeah, so we, so we're, we're trying to push Sandy into more, more creation because he's very poetic and very nuanced. Well, it's great support. We're, we're, we're glad you're here. Come up from the city. Well, yeah, that was one of those lights coming up. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't turn yeah. around and give you the red light, though. <laughs> no, no. Well, thanks to the, uh, the watchers and commenters. It's much appreciated. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, everybody, and uh, also for your patience and for navigating 
uh, technology and I hope that it was a smooth experience at your end and uh, that you got to see uh, all the films and uh, certainly uh, if you have any reflections uh, afterwards uh, email us back uh, and uh, uh, that address that we gave you the directions on is a is a real address it's not a, a robot so uh, we we look forward to hearing back from everybody and um, on the NASA tube page or the YouTube for NASA there are uh, uh, videos of our prior two the prior performances that, that we had uh, earlier in October uh, with uh, Debasha Sinha and Robert Fantanato uh, that they're more music oriented but they also have uh, video interesting video work in them uh, so there I invite you to uh, explore those uh, on your own time and we'll try and put together uh, something out of tonight uh, with uh, mixing between uh, Sandy's films and our discussion that we can release later on YouTube. But I think that that will make uh, an interesting experience if everyone's okay with sharing your uh, comments and such. Thanks, Nasa. Cheers. All right. Well, have a good night, everyone. And Thank you for uh, for joining us. All right. Salut, Good night. Bye bye.